West Tennessee on a Saturday morning. Good morning and welcome in to Tricks of the Trade with your host, John Allen. Brought to you in part by West End Fence Company, Economy Siding and Windows, and Quality Outdoor Products. Now, here he is, John Allen. Morning, Jim, and everybody else out there, and uh, welcome to Tricks of the Trade. Glad you joined us this morning, and uh, so just sit down and get you a cup of coffee. Wish I had one. And nice. uh, Even we on could, a hot day, that would be nice. Yeah, I always have to have coffee in the morning to get started. I had mine before I came up here, so yeah. uh, so anyway, it's just yeah. always can have another one. But, always, yeah. I'll, I'll use. I usually grab one on the way home when I when I leave here because it's right between me and my house. Uh huh. <laughs> what so when you when you out on the road drinking coffee? When what where do you go? What's what's your stop if you're in a hurry? And you, I mean, you're out all the time, so you got to grab something. Sometime. What, whatever's close. Really, it doesn't matter. I, I, I'll, I'll stop at a Dodge store or a convenience store, just yeah. any place. Yeah. But I got to have plain coffee. I can't have this what I call sissy coffee. I know, me either. If it's if it's not just plain old black coffee, just give yeah, it to this, somebody. Else. This flap a rap a deputy do stuff they put in there. <laughs> I, I don't know what all that stuff is, and it's just not natural. Yeah. I don't even want cream or sugar, just coffee. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, look up look up the uh, the calorie count on some of those things. I don't do that either. You could eat real you could eat real food and get less calories than you do in one of those things. Sometimes. Well, you can. I I just I don't get it. If I want dessert, yeah. I'll go to Dairy Queen. I understand that. <laughs> or yeah. something like that. Oh, yeah, that, that's uh, that's not the place I stop on my way home. I stop at the uh, at the place that has the clown and the hamburger. The, oh, you do? I do. I love their coffee. In fact, that's what I use at home. I, I have one of those Keurig machines, you know, makes one cup at a time, and that's huh. what I buy. You know, that makes sense, but I just can't. I got to make a pot, <laughs> even if I have to throw half of it that's, away. That's what I was doing. I was throwing most of it away because nobody drinks it but me. And uh, so I, I, uh, I got one a couple of years ago. And then they came out with one that is just a single cup. You put your cup under there, you put the little doohickey in there, and hit the button. That just sounds so millennial, not like you. But, I mean, it's just. <laughs> well, there's some it's, things. It's okay. It's all right. You know, we, uh, I don't know where, what all we're going to talk about this morning. we got all kinds of stuff oh, we yeah. can jump into. But, yeah, but we need know. to remind everybody we want to talk to them. We can't, yeah, give because, us some phone numbers. Yeah. Let's get some calls if, in this if, morning. If, if, if we don't get calls and text in here, then you're going to sit there and babble all morning, all morning and, long. And uh, that sometimes works. <laughs> Most of the time it works. Well, it's just you never know what we'll get into. This we got into true. monkey this and coconut juice last week. This and, is true. Uh, yeah, and you know, who Thursday, knows? Thursday, we took apart the space shuttle to get a, to get a, a dirt dob ride. Oh, only to get denied <laughs> as, a, as a claim. Yeah, we, we need to follow up on that. Let me give these phone numbers. 731-891-616. Six one that puts you right in the uh, call in board, right into John and uh, the Victory Honda text line seven three one four one zero seven five six zero. It's that simple. We want to talk to you this morning. Now, Thursday we talked about a project you got into uh, repairing a uh, tankless water heater. No, oh, yeah. Which you had to call three or four different people and said it looked like on the inside it looked like the uh, the module for the space shuttle. It, 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 I believe it was. Yeah. And, and as it as it was shook out, what happened was some little tiny bugs, a dirt dauber and some ladybugs, got into the filter. Yes. And shut the thing down. It couldn't suck in enough air right. for it to breathe, right. so it cut itself off so it wouldn't have a conniption and blow up. Right. So you, you know. fixed that, and you even added a little something. A screen on the outside of it to keep more bugs from getting inside. It only seemed natural. Right. So you call the warranty company to get this all taken care of, and they said, "Uh-uh." <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> I, I did. I called it in. This guy had this home warranty program. Now, keep in mind, I understand you got to keep things up around your house. Right. But it took a rocket scientist. To send me instructions on how to take this thing apart with very, very precise instructions, even to make sure that when I took a screw out, I put that same screw back in that same hole. Even if they were the same size and they looked alike, right. you made sure you put the same screw. So I had a diagram, and I had it laid out. 
screw A, screw B, <laughs> screw C, screw D, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Just one of those things. And I was wondering what you were going to do when you got down to uh, T, <laughs> e, <laughs> e, Z, you know? <laughs> uh, C and the D, you know? Anyway, I, I did all of that, and I got everything blown out, and I got it all put back together. Now, so I call it into this home warranty company. I would tell you the name, but it wouldn't be a good choice. That's true. <laughs> if you know you, what I mean. But <laughs> you do work for them. So. Well, you know, it, yeah. it, and they told me after much debate, they had to get advi- uh, senior advisors of the advisors, and it went all the way to the top, which probably the top guy had to have it explained to him what a tankless hot water heater was. Sure. So anyway, they denied the claim and called it, get this, Routine maintenance. And you spent how much time and how many phone it calls? It took me two hours to take this thing apart and put it back together and and be spoon fed by the little white coat down in uh, uh, Georgia who knew all about these things. And I say that this time with much respect. The guy knew what he was talking about. Un- unbelievable. And and. And the guy told me it was routine maintenance. And I said, how do you call that routine maintenance? Well, you got to check your filters and you got to take care. I said, this thing was buried inside of this unit. A homeowner, it says on the pamphlet, train technicians only. Homeowners do not attempt. Yeah. says that on the book. Yeah. And uh, and, and I, I was even cool doing it. I had to call the smarter people than me, which could have called just about anybody at that point (laughs) but yeah but they denied that claim that was just wrong i'm still just can't get over that it uh but anyway we got it fixed yeah well that's the main thing you got it fixed but who who would even think a regular everyday homeowner is not going to know that there's a filter in there much less that he needs to clean it well it I, i wouldn't even call it a filter it was a great and something got in there that wasn't supposed to, a dirt dauber and ladybugs. Yeah. They just kind of crawled in there and thought sure. they'd set a spell, and then they got their honey toasted when the burner came on. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those things. And, yeah. it, and when that thing comes on, it's got a fan in it, yeah. and it kind of like sucks it down. And it, it's kind of like sitting on the toilet and you can't get up because yeah. you're sucked to the lid. Like at a cruise ship. That's why yeah. there's a space between the <laughs> lid and the porcelain so that doesn't happen. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, it was um, it was it was an interesting phone call and I realized real quick that those people up in uh, Yankee, Northern Yankee Town, whatever that is way up, yeah. way up they ain't from around here, yeah. they uh, I don't know, they can't even say y'all <laughs> well, it's good. you guys. Yes. You guys. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, we don't we don't want them using our our language too much. Well enough. Yeah, I know. That way, that, then we wouldn't be able to tell the difference until it was too late. Well, I know. Is in the famous words of Louis Grizzard, uh, "God talks like us." <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can understand it. That's right. Every That's time, right. Every time. Yeah. Phone well. number for tricks of the trade this morning: seven three one eight nine one six one six one. Right into the box, and then if you want to do it by text. 731-410-7560. You're listening to Tricks of the Trade with John Allen here on 93.1. And also, we're out there on the stream at y'all, Y-A-L-L, no apostrophe, dot com. Huh. Yeah. yeah. What station are we on today? 93.1. Okay. Yeah. Okay, just check. <laughs> um, so I got I some. I got. <laughs> <laughs> um. I do have one thing to talk about this morning. All right. Well, I have several, but this is yeah. a good way to start it off. All right. I always talk about people that gotta have a gotta have a plan. Yeah. You gotta know what. Got to you. Got to know how to get there. Right. And if you or I, and I mean I do this, you sit so you sit down and you draw a sketch, a floor plan uh-huh. of what you're gonna do, and you go in there and you measure your rooms. And it may be 10 feet 3 inches by 11 feet 6 inches. And you write it on your little piece of scratch paper. 
Right. Or in many times, well, I can't even say that. I used to do a lot of stuff on the back of a Kroger sack, but they're plastic now and <laughs> can't hardly right. write on them. But anyway, it uh, you, you you draw this house plan up. Right. And and you, you draw it, and, you, and you're ready to start doing things, and when you try to scale it out, it don't work. Because here you are with a single pencil line between the room representing your wall. Yes. But your wall is four and a half inches thick or larger. Right. What I'm trying to say is you got your house that say, say it's 40 by 60, and you can't get all your rooms in there because you forgot to account for the wall thicknesses. Whoops. You may be a couple of feet short by the time you get to the end of the house. Well, sure, that makes sense. Well, it makes sense, except when you're trying to explain to somebody that they were going to give them a 12-foot room on the end of the house. By the time you got down there, you only got 10 foot left. (laughs) And you can't stretch it. You know, it's... So you have to be careful, and I, I tell people that are doing this, you know, you, you, you got to watch out because there's two things you're going to mess up on. Number one, you're going to mess up on your floor covering because you didn't allow for your floor thicknesses, and the other thing is you're going to be off on your room sizes. So if you're going to do that and not actually draw the wall on, uh, on the piece of paper, call that the center line of the wall. Yeah. And that way, that'll keep you out of trouble. Because uh, I've lost count of the times that people will want to furnish their own material. Oh, no. Yeah. So it gets to floor covering this time. And they'll, they'll say, I'll say, how big is your room? And, I mean, I'll tell them how big the room is. And they'll go get a piece of floor covering or carpet exactly that size. And what I did not know was they didn't allow for what we call waste or the thickness of the wall. So if you've got a room, and let's just say for talking purposes, it is a 12 by 12 room. Right. And you go by 12 foot of carpet. You're going to be about two and a half inches too short because you're not allowing it to go into the door. Uh-huh. And if you got a door on the other side of the room, you're going to be even shorter. So you're going to find yourself having to put little pieces in, little strips. And if you didn't run the floor covering in the same direction as what your door is, it's going to be crossed. Yeah. It's not going to look right. It's going to look bad. No matter how you brush that carpet. Yeah. So. And that's the worst place to have an extra piece is in a doorway. That's exactly right because it wears so yeah. bad right yeah. there. And you can hang your high heel shoe on it. You can. Well, I used to. I don't wear those. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad about that. <laughs> Worry about you, Jim. I really do sometimes. <laughs> but you know that that is something. And when and and we can talk about floor cover just a little bit. You, yeah. you got to allow for waste. I, I argue with these young. Let's see. What am I going to call these people? Uh, what what. <laughs> We'll, we'll say these young wannabe adjusters. Oh, okay. Okay, we'll say yeah. that. That that everything depends on their computer. If the computer says it's there, it's there. Right. But if the computer says it's not, you're not going to any, get paid any more for it. So in other words, I find it very hard to convince one of those guys that I've got a Room and we'll just say it's eleven by twelve room. Right. They will want to sell me eleven by twelve. Says so, so the eleven by twelve piece of carpet has to go in there. And I say no. What if I turn the other way? I have to buy a twelve by twelve. Yeah. Can't get that through their thick little millennial head. I mean, because you got to run your floor covering all the same way. Yeah. And then you got waste. Then you got your doorways, like yeah. we were talking about. Right. And you got to allow for waste on this stuff. So, you know, if you're taking a floor plan to your local carpet store, right. 
and they are measuring off of that, make sure they you know which way you're going to run your floor covering because it all's got to run the same way if it's carpet. Yeah. Otherwise, it just won't look right. True. And then you got to allow for your doors, and you got to allow for waste. You know, eight to ten percent waste is the norm. On top of that. And sometimes you can get by with it a little less, sometimes a little more. It depends on sometimes the way you're going to, what kind of flooring material you may have. If, if you're doing hardwood, you may have a different waste factor. If you're doing ceramic tile, you may have a different waste factor. But you need to account for all this stuff. And then if you're doing something kind of fancy where you're running things at angles, then you got to add for even more because... Mm-hmm. You'll have a pretty good little pile of triangles over there that you uh, you don't you don't know what to do with, but it eats into the waste factor quite a bit. So make sure you if you if you just absolutely got to furnish the material yourself and your your pro that you have out there uh, is only going to furnish his labor. Let him at least measure the job for you before he gets started, because here's what happens. Here's what happens. And, I, and this is my tip for floor covering for the day. You buy the stuff yourself. Yeah. You get it out there. Here comes the guy who's going to put it in. And he puts it in. He takes your word for it. And he gets started. And all of a sudden, he's say he's doing the whole house. And he gets down to towards the end, and he's rolling that roll out, cutting off what he needs. And all of a sudden, he's six feet short. Mm, not yeah, good. We, we, not good. So you go back to the store to get six feet, only to find out it's a different roll, Uh if they even have it. And then maybe it's a different die lot, which chances are it is. is. So you, the homeowner who went to go get it, gets it anyway, not knowing any difference. And he comes out and he puts it (laughs) in, he seams it together. And you're looking at the room one way, and the light's hitting it, and it's saying, hmm, something wrong there. Maybe it's a bad seam. It's not a bad seam at all. It's a different dye light. Yeah. And there ain't nothing you can do to make that look right. So you're probably going to waste a room of carpet because you are going to have to seam it again, but this time it'll probably have to be in a door. And I guess if if your door's shut, and you can't see the rest of the house, you may not notice the difference. <laughs> sure. Just keep people out of there. Nobody don't yeah, know the that's, difference. Yeah, that's right. That's right. What, when you're buying carpet, typically, what, how, what's the width of a normal roll of carpet? 12 foot. 12 foot. Most so, of the time. So if you if you got a, if you got a bedroom that's 15, 16 by something bigger than that, then this guy, obviously it's going to have to have a seam. It's going to have somewhere. to have a seam. Yeah. And just remember, your carpet's all got to run the same way. You can't just take your scraps and... Oh, yeah, I got a piece over here. I can just lay that in right here. Right. It's got to all run the same direction. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, old-timers. It has a grain to it, basically. Well, yeah. The way the, way it, the fibers it, It's the way yeah. the yarn's yeah. weaved in there. Yeah. And when you brush it one way, it looks one way. And you brush it the other, it looks a different way. So you want to be able to run your hand over it after you've seamed it and everything's going in the right direction. Correct. Otherwise, you, you're not going to have a happy person. For sure. And you'll get blamed for it. Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We're talking to John Allen this morning on Tricks of the Trade. We're talking about floor coverings right now. Give us a call at uh, 731-891-6161 or the Victory Honda text line at 731-410-7560. Need to hear from you this morning. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's, uh, let's continue on. I've got a couple of floor covering questions for you. Away from carpet, we're going to talk about other types of floor covering for a minute. Okay. And we'll do that right after we take a quick commercial break. This is about uh, two minutes or so. We'll be right back. I'll be here. And anyone turning 65, Medicare has approved new benefits not included with original Medicare and older Medicare Advantage plans. You may not be getting all of the benefits you're entitled to, including in-home aids, telephone appointments with your doctors, home-delivered meals and prescriptions. These benefits may be available, and it's a free call to enroll. The new plans may also offer free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free wellness visits, and gym memberships. Call the Medicare Benefits Line now. It's easy. Call 800-747-1186. 
800-747-1186. Find out if you're eligible for new benefits like meal and prescription delivery, in-home aids, and telemedicine. Some plans may have a $0 monthly premium or zero copays for big out-of-pocket savings. Not all Medicare Advantage plans are alike. The new plans have more benefits for many people. Call 800-747-1186. 800-747-1186. Stay tuned for a very special message from Dustin Ring. Hey, Jackson in West Tennessee. This is Dustin, and I buy houses for cash, and I want to buy more. I also work with over 700 cash investors that also buy houses. The best part is we buy them in as-is condition so you don't have to fix a thing. We will even pay for your closing cost, and we can also close in as little as seven days. We buy vacant houses, rented houses, fixer-upper houses, houses that have caught on fire, foreclosing houses, leftover divorce houses. Are you relocating for your job? Or are you a tired landlord tired of dealing with problem tenants? We'll buy those houses too. And hey, no matter what the reason is, I'm here to help. Call Dustin Ring at 731-549-5480. Again, that's 731-549-5480. Again, this is Dustin Ring, and I buy houses for cash. Call me today or text me, 731-549-5480. Tricks of the trade on a muggy Saturday morning in West Tennessee. Glad to have you along. It's, uh, 731-891. 6161, the call in line number this morning, 731 410 7560 is the Victory Honda text line, and we uh, would love to talk to you. There is no subject, you are the subject, so let us know what you want to talk about. We're talking about uh, carpets and floor coverings and things, I wanted to move off. Did you cover everything you want to pretty much on carpet? I can't think of anything else right now. There's a lot of stuff out there, but I it kind of escapes little, me. I just made a little pun there, didn't I? What'd you do? Did you cover everything on the uh-huh. carpet? Uh-huh. Boom, boom, psh. <laughs> Save that one for roofing too. Okay. I don't want to go up there yet. It's too hot to go up there. Wood wood flooring. That's that's a laying carpet is I won't say it's an art form, but you gotta know what you're doing or you get what you're talking about. You get something that is ugly. Wood, well yeah. wood flooring can be the same way. Yeah. How do you determine? You walk into my my living room. Okay. My living room is roughly twenty by twenty. Okay. okay? You walk into that living room, and I'm fixing to put down some hardwood floor. John Allen is going to do it for me. How do you determine which way the boards need to run? Do they need to go this way or that way? You just <laughs> That's a personal preference, to tell you the truth. Is it really? Yeah. You, can, uh, you see what it's going to tie into. For instance, if you have hardwood in the other room, yeah. and it's a different plank, you may not want to run it in the same direction. You might want to run it perpendicular. Right. And uh, normally you will run the boards with the longest length of the room. Like okay. you got a room that's, say, 12 by 20. Yeah. You'll want to run it the 20-foot way, long ways, most of the time. Right. Okay. And, uh, you know, it, but, but it is a personal preference. You can, you can do that. Just kind of what fits with your surroundings. But if it's hardwood floor and if you're nailing it down, I want to go perpendicular to the joist. So that's a key thing. Otherwise, it has a tendency to make it look like a little washboard. Yeah. Now, if you're on a slab, then you don't have that consideration no, to worry that, about, right? That's right. Okay. You got other things to worry yeah, about. Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. We have a text coming in here. And let me see if I can get all this in uh, one sentence here. I wish there was a public posting board downtown where real handymen, no yanks, <laughs> <laughs> could post it to do work. Replace some kitchen paneling asking too much? Question mark. No social media, period. I'll do uh, the checkoff list so that they can uh, list each. Ten things, maybe. If they uh, check them all, they're liars. <laughs> if nobody, uh, But nobody would uh, show up and, uh, well, never mind. It won't work anyway. <laughs> So you got you got to check them off. If they get ten out of ten, you ain't hiring them because they're not telling you the truth. Oh my well, god! You're probably right about that in, in many well, ways. Many well, days. you know, you know, if 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 you're talking about a single individual, it uh, it's possible. You know, it's yeah. possible. But you know, there are some multi trade, multi talented people out there that oh, can there are, yeah. do a little bit of everything. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And one of those guys. Is, uh, has a rather rare written nickname. Everybody calls him Stormy. Oddly enough, he owns a storm window and door. Yeah, he does. And siding. 
Mm-hmm. And carport covers. Mm. Yeah. Stormy can do a lot of things. And, and he has. He finished one of mine yesterday. Bless right. his heart. He did. He got out there, and, and it looks pretty. I, I saw I saw this with my own eyes. A little, you saw how ants, they come in little trails, uh-huh. you know? Yeah. Well, they, they're pesky little rats. Yes, you know, they, they once they get to a place they used to go in, yeah. They, they they try to always get back in there. Well, we messed them up this week on one particular spot. <laughs> we built a wall and that became a hallway. Yeah. This was on an outside on a concrete slab. And they were used to taking that path to Grandma's house, you know. Well, I watched them. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Here come the ants coming across the slab, and they get to this wall that we had built. And then Stormy put siding on it. Yeah. And I told Stormy, there's, there's two things we want to watch for is the insects and the water. I want to make sure I get it sealed where it sits down on there because sure. we had a frog strangler, you know, yesterday afternoon. Oh, and, we ever. and it will, uh, water tends to run under walls a lot of time. Well, here come the ants. They all in, in single file, and here they go. And they get that wall, and they all kind of bunch up like the, what's them? Keystone cops where they all run into the end of the alley and they all bunch up. <laughs> Just keep going. And apparently the the smart one, we'll call him Mo, <laughs> he decided that I ain't getting under that wall yeah. because he had, uh, Stormy had sealed it underneath there. And they turned around and they went out, went down about four feet, had another escape route. Uh-huh. And thought they'd go in right there. Well, they yep. couldn't get in that way either. <laughs> and it was just funny. I was sitting there. Watching those ants while I was waiting for it to stop raining to where I could go get in my truck because I wasn't going to get my hair wet. You there know, you how go. I got, because I, I had my do Thursday, as you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. It looks great, too, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> I've been waiting for those all week. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, uh, yeah, he, he can, Stormy can seal things up, and it it didn't even look like he had caulked anything. Yeah. It, it all is hermetically sealed, as they hermetically say. Hermetically sealed. That's yeah. nothing getting in, but, nothing uh, getting out. Wonderful siding job. We even put it on the ceiling. Got our lights up there. Everything's nice and bright and yep. white. Uh, wrap my windows. Wrap my doors. That homeowner will not have to pull out the first paintbrush to do anything. Now you're talking. So a couple of years from now, maybe he can just hose it off if he wants to, if it gets a little dusty. And, uh, but he will not have to do any exterior painting. He did a great job. So uh, I congratulate Stormy for taking care of another one of my customers. Yep. And he can do that at your house, too. He can come out and uh, put you up some nice windows. Yep. And uh, Put you on some gutter guards. Keep the yep. leaves out of your gutters. Yeah. For us older folks that don't climb ladders anymore. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Stormy at Economy, Siding, and Windows. Uh, they do windows. They do siding. They do patio covers, gutters, gutter guards. Uh, there's all kinds of things. They do it they all. They can help you with around the house. EconomySiding.com or call them at 422-3828. You're listening to Tricks of the Tray with John Allen on this Saturday morning. 731-410-7560. The Victory Honda text line 731-891-6161. If you'd like to talk to John directly in this morning, so give us a yell. We'd like to talk to you. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah, don't forget y'all.com. John Rawls down there on the floor playing with his uh, computer set up. And, uh, yeah, we're out there on y'all.com. You can see what we're doing here at the Old Country Store in the Dixie Cafe. You can almost smell the bacon through the through the internet. If, is the cafe even open over here? Uh, this side is not. The buffet is on oh, the other side. Well, we have to go smell on the other side. Oh, uh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Take All our right. smellers over there. There we go. Yeah. yeah. All right. We talk about wood wood floors. Yeah. Now, I remember when you did mine, I came in one afternoon, and you had cleaned, your guys had cleaned the floor up and getting ready to put the wood down, and there were boxes of wood strategically placed all over my house where they had been stacked in the garage for a couple of days waiting to be used. Why did you do that? Had to look busy. (laughs) (laughs) Why did I ask? (laughs) No, no, you see, people don't understand this, and, and they really think that it's just an old tale, but... If you're putting down a real wood floor, right, 
the wood has to what they call acclimate to the surroundings. It it has it wood is in constant motion. It expands, it contracts. And if you're putting it down and it's tongue in a groove and you don't let it acclimate and you put it down after it's been in a cold uh, warehouse, for, for instance, and the humidity is low, and you put it down tight with those guns that you use to fasten them down, yep. and then here comes the humidity and it swells up, it'll start puckering on your floor and it'll look like a washboard across there. And so that's why I tell people when you are getting ready to put a floor down, give it at least 48 hours to bring it in, scatter it out in the environment that it's going to be put down in. Right. And uh, let it get used to your central air and heat the way you've got it, you know, and your humidity in your house. And then when you put it down, chances are it'll stay put and look the same all the time yep. if you don't do that. Um, you set yourself up for a catastrophe that's going to be pretty expensive because there's nothing worse than having floors get to moving on you and they get to puckering. Oh, yeah. And uh, had a had a person, true story, up in Huntington, bought a beautiful floor, hickory wood. Ooh. It was gorgeous, you know. It had a, a deep, dark vein in it that kind of meandered all through the room. Right. And uh, he put it down. And, and the thing of it is, acclimation was really part of the problem. They bought this wood green, the trees. Yeah. And they took it to a mill and had it cut, and they dried it. And it wasn't completely dry. Mm. I thought it was. But it wasn't. They put it in. I went in this house. I kid you not. And the the floor all over it looked like a roller coaster. Oh, man. It was horrible. Uh, we got a phone call over there. Let's yeah, take do. that. Let's jump in there right now and see if we can get this thing lined up. Good morning and welcome to Tricks of the Trade. Hey, hey John, how you doing? I'm doing good. What's going on? All right, I got a question, John. Uh, uh, when I ask the question, you mind if I hold on for a couple minutes for a follow-up? Okay. No, you don't okay. have to wait. No, I'm, I'm talking uh, live okay. right now. Huh? We're live right now. Uh, okay, I'm uh, I'm, I'm going to hold on when I ask you the question because I can't get you on the radio. Okay, no problem. Okay, uh I, I live in the city, John. I live in the city. I'm on city sewer. And uh, I had a, a, a relapical uh, problem to come out because I don't have a clean out. And they took a mole up, ran the line down through it, had the camera, had the camera on it. And uh, the camera revealed uh, roots in the line, roots in the sewer line at the, at the rear of the house, down in the ground in one of the sewer lines uh, under the ground. So my question is, how can I get rid of them roots without going, digging in the ground, without digging the sewer lines up? Well, you obviously have a crack in your sewer line. That's your first problem. Otherwise, the roots wouldn't be getting in there. What is your sewer line made of? Is it uh, clay tile, cast iron, PVC, do you know? Yeah, it's the PVC. PVC. All right. Well, you have a crack in one of those lines. It's probably in a joint. Uh, roots are very powerful, and they will they will find a way to get into that pipe, and a lot of times it's with a joint. Now, they make a product that if whoever you had out there had a saw head, to where he could auger that out and get those roots out. They make a product. It's, it's actually called Root Destroyer. And I'm sure there are other products out there by that name, but you will flush it down your toilet, and it's a chemical that will help kill those roots. Uh, and and use it a lot in the county and the country on septic tanks, but uh, where you have sectional tiles, and it's not a solid tile, but if you can cut that root out, and then about every couple of months flush a box of this root destroyer down in it. It will help 
retard or kill the growth of those roots. But I would be, if I were you, uh, I'd be looking a little farther than that. I would, if the guy had a camera that he ran down there, hopefully he told you how far down the line those roots were to where you could actually go outside and trace it down and see where the tree is and where the problem is because if it's not too deep, you might could dig it up and chop it, the roots out from the outside and repair that pipe. Uh, you are going to have an ongoing problem. They're going to keep trying to come back. Uh, but you normally will find that maybe that sewer line ran oh, a long, long, many, many years ago and then a tree grew on top of it. It's very common. Uh, but that's what you're going to have to do. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah, the tree is on top of the, uh, above ground, on top of the sewer line. Uh, when the, the tree was planted 30 years ago, and and uh, uh, my parents did not know that this, it was on top of the sewer line. That's right. Yeah, it happens very frequently. Well, try some of that root destroyer yeah, yeah. and get, the, uh, get your plumber to use a cutting head on his drain auger, and he can saw through it. And then if you'll use this chemical, it's a powder, you just uh, flush it down your toilet, and that will uh, help retard the growth of that, okay? Okay, okay now the auger, the auger, uh, it, it, it has to go through the sewer line, the auger? The auger, yes, uh-huh. The, the it, thing you t yeah, uh -huh. it goes through there, and it's got a little saw on the end of it. And it will cut through all those roots, and then you can pull them out. Uh, okay, how, how to get the auto? I'm just asking. I know the problem, I know, but how to get the auto through the sewer lines uh, from from digging them up? No, I mean, he, he will. You said he pulled your toilet because you didn't have a clean out on the outside. That's correct. All right. Well, he'll do the same thing. He'll run his drain auger through the toilet. I mean, uh, take the toilet up and run through the line, and it will run all the way out till it clears the obstruction. Is there another way to do it without pulling the toilet up? No, sir. That that's the only. All right, all only right. Way, you got to pull man. it up. I appreciate it, John. Now, now I'm gonna tell you one thing. The best way to do that without getting all that uh -huh. mess in your house is where your line comes out from under your house. Dig it up in the yard, and have your plumber put a clean out in it. That way you can access it all the time. And believe me, if you started getting roots in the line, you're gonna have to get in that line pretty frequently, probably at least once a year. So if you had a good access point right there, uh, you can run cables down, clear the lines, and then always have a way of getting into it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Install the clean out. Okay, I yep. got you. All yep. right, thanks a lot, man. All right, thank you. Appreciate the call. Thank you, caller. Appreciate right. that. John, we got a couple of uh, text uh, coming in over here. Number one says, John, I need a surveyor. Every number I call, no answer. Help. Surveyor. Yeah. Well, now, Jim, you may know more about this than I do as far as surveying back from your previous appraisal days. Yeah, you know, it's been so long since I've, I've been away from it, almost two years now, and I'm not sure who's still, because a lot of those guys are as old as I am or older. Yeah, uh, there was a guy that I called about a year ago. Was it David Hall? David Hall. That's what I was fixing to say. David right. Hall uh, is a surveyor here in town. He's listed in the book. Right. <laughs> in the book. What book? Uh, <laughs> Google. Yeah. yeah. Google uh, David Hall. He is a surveyor, and uh, the, he was the last person I called. Now, yeah. there may be others, but. You might, uh, you might look it up also under civil engineers. Civil engineers. There yeah. you go. Yeah. But, yeah, Google, Google surveyors in this area and civil engineers in this area. And, yeah, David, uh, we worked – or we didn't work for him, but we worked with him on some projects back when I was yeah. still still working regular. 
and uh, he's, he's a good guy. And you can probably call most any of the local engineers and architects around here that design buildings, and they also may have some names for you yep. that they could pass along. Yep. What else we got? Got a, uh, got an answer to that text. It said David Hall's very good. So there you go. Yeah, we were we were right on right on target with that one. All right. Uh, let's see, uh, John. What is the best way to get an estimate for outside house painting? It needs replacing some wooden window sills, boards between the roof and the wall. Might not need the walls painted, just the trim. Two different people have come but not returned an estimate. Is it just too small? You know, I get this question a lot, and and I'm even guilty of it. Um, right now, all the good people are so covered up, they don't mean to not do it. I mean, they have the best intentions in the world, but right now, we're kind of going at who hollers the loudest. Yeah. And, and you get so many things on your plate that you just can't keep up with it sometimes, and you know, I, uh, I'm guilty of being slow on getting back to some people, and it's not that it's too small. It's just that I hadn't gotten to it yet. Uh, but I, I would give the guys a call, give them, give them a, and just stay on them and say, hey, I, I need to know about this. But in your case, you may have to call two people. Now, your painter may not um, do carpentry work. And uh, I know we just did a job yesterday in three-way. And uh, the same situation. We had some rotted face aboard, had some rotted uh, jams around a garage door, and uh, had some fans that were out. You almost needed a general contractor because you needed to have a painter, you needed to have a carpenter, you needed to have an electrician. And uh, we even ended up with a cabinet maker up there uh, repairing some doors and sure. and to coordinate all those skills a lot of times you just need to call a home improvement contractor right. so uh, I don't use the show to promote myself but this is what we do so uh, but just be a little patient there's a lot of people out there now that are, are have been waiting a long time and it's just kind of hard right now to get around to everybody yeah. as quickly as they would like to be served Good deal. There you go, Texter. Thank you for listening, and thanks for texting in. Thanks to our callers also. We've got about, uh, oh, another 18 minutes left in the show. So if you've got a question, we got plenty of time. Give us a call, 731-891-6161. It's that simple. We'll put you right on the phone line here. Victory Honda text, 731-410-7560, I like the last couple of questions we had. Uh, one of our other sponsors here on Saturday morning is uh, some folks that we both have had experience with, and good experience, by the way. Mm -hmm. and that would be West End Fence Company. Yes, yes. Now yeah. you know, you know, when you think of fencing, I, at least when I do, if somebody says I need a, I need a, uh, I need to get my fence repaired, first thing that comes to my mind is a six foot tall cedar perimeter fence. Yeah. They do, but they do much more than that. Well, that's just it. it it's become so. Everybody's got different wants and needs and yeah. all that you know these do six foot dog-eared fences like you're talking like, about right like now yeah. uh, -huh. uh maybe not everybody wants one of those they may want to uh and the reason they they want something else a little different look you may want a wrought iron fence but maybe you think that's too expensive because back in the day it was solid steel that made all those things and right. it was quite expensive but now they've got tubular stock that's aluminum it's lightweight um, it can be done and these guys can put it up to where it looks like it all grew together and not like <laughs> you just glued a bunch of pieces together yeah but uh yeah it, it and and then some people want little short fences just to keep their puppy dog in and that he's not going to get any bigger and i've seen them put up little three foot and four foot fences yeah. and uh and then if you're out on the farm, you just may want a barbed wire fence. Who that's knows? True. You that's know, true. That's true. Or you uh, might want to go back with a plain old chain link. Well, that seemed to be what everybody wanted back in the 60s and 70s yeah. and 80s, but we they just become a little more diverse yes. in what they do. It has so. gone out of favor. Yeah. Oh, yes. 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 That's right. Styles change. They do. They do. They do. So. Yeah. 
West End Fence Company. Great folks. They do a great job. And when they leave, you'll never know they've been there. They clean up their mess when they get out of there. And you can catch them uh, at their office at 2158 Hollywood Drive. Call them at 668-5959 or email Ricky in the sales department at rpennington1 one rpennington1 at yahoo.com. They'll take care of business for you. They'll do it. Absolutely. So what else is on, on our minds? We were talking about wood floors, uh, acclimating the wood, make sure you, when you put it down it's uh, – it's, it's been inside long enough that it's it's going to lay right. Yeah, but before we get away from that, I yeah. want to follow up on that just a little bit. Okay. Things kind of pop in my mind. When you're talking about wood, remember that wood comes from trees. Yes. Now, you sometimes have to remember that. <laughs> it's not manufactured to where every piece of wood looks the same. Right. You know, you buy these synthetic floors and these imitation floors to where every board looks the same. Yeah, which is boring to me. Well, it is. It doesn't look like the real deal, but if you're dealing with a wood floor, remember that's a tree. That's a wood. That it's no two alike. The grains are different. The you might be it might be a clear grain. It may have a, a dominant grain. It it may stain differently. Everything about it's different. Some boards are very light some are dark yep. and when you're laying a floor out and you mentioned it when we did yours a long time ago you had boxes all over the floor well you have to open those boxes and kind of take a look at that wood to see if you have a dominant grain or if you've got different colors of boards that are some light some are dark and you got to blend all that together otherwise it looks like spotted dog uh-huh. And it, it it just don't look right. You have to blend your wood together. So it becomes important if you're doing this yourself to open those boxes after it's acclimated, lay that wood out to kind of make sure you have a a consistent flow of color changes in there to where it looks right. You don't want to, you know, like put a box that may be all light pieces in one spot and then you open up another box and it's dark and it just it doesn't look right. It looks hodgepodge. Yeah. So uh, kind of blend your wood. Make sure everything does well. Texter says, John, have a new dog. Not trained well yet. Oh. Notice yesterday a yellow spot on my wood floor. Mm. How do I fix this? I'm on a slab. I know that's not a good thing. <laughs> How do you how do you fix that wood floor? You got you got a dog that has ruined the finish on a couple of boards, which hasn't happened to me in a long time. But uh, how do you do that? Can you well, take that? I mean, wood floors on a slab. You you for the most part are they glued, or are they free floating now? Well, you got them both. Some are okay. glued, some are floating, and well, you got a problem right there because you can replace the board. Yeah. But depending upon the type, of, you know, how thick it is, what kind of wood it is, right. you might be able to bleach it out a little bit. But you also run the risk of making it worse than what it is right now. But you can take out a board if you saved a board yeah. from original installation. If you didn't and you got to go buy a board, it may look worse than if you just looked at the spot. Yeah, that's true. Be a good place for an area rug. There you go. Yeah, a plant <laughs> stand would be good right, right yeah, there. Yeah, uh, I wish I could give you a, a good answer on that, but without seeing it, I, I really don't know. Take the same texture says, I believe they called it manufactured flooring when I put it down. Uh-oh. Well, is it real wood or is it a print? Like, is it, is it, it like sheet plastic on the top of it that's what i'm asking yeah if, uh, let me. if it's real wood you still if you can find a board you can probably replace it but i don't know of a trick that i could tell you that you could put on it without it hurting the finish yeah he, say, he says pretty sure real wood he says they call he she uh says they called it manufactured flooring well, or engineered flooring, yeah. uh, where it's in layers, kind of like plywood with just the good stuff on the top layer. Yeah. Uh, What's the difference in that and a laminate? Well, a laminate is like sheet plastic, okay. Formica, like is on the top, 
and a lot of times you got balsa wood underneath that. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Got a call coming in here, John. Let me get okay. you get you in the box here. Go for it. All right. Good morning. Welcome, to Tricks of the Trade. Are you with me? Well, I think they dropped out on us. Okay. Yep. Do we have a delay on this thing? Yeah, or? there's about a three-second delay. Yeah. About a three-second delay. Yeah. Are yeah. you with me still, caller? No, they dropped out. They, okay. They dropped the call. So. Oh, well. Give us try, a call back. Try back. Try back. Okay. Well, let's see. I've talked about all I wanted. Whoop, here we try, go. Let's try it again. Let's see if this is, I think this is the same one back. All right, go, John. All right. Good morning, and welcome to Tricks of the Trade. Call you there. Good morning. There you go. Hey, how okay. are you? Uh, yeah, we're talking about the uh, flooring. I tell you what, I've got I got uh, solid hardwood flooring, oak flooring. The finish on it's starting to raise a little bit. You know, it's about twenty one, twenty two years old. Not raised. I'm just talking about it's getting kind of rough looking. Just yeah. not as shiny as it once was. Yeah. Why can't I? Why can't I? I know this is going to be time consuming. Why can't I? Little at a time take an orbital sander and just remove I don't want to dig down into the woods I don't want to get one of those big sanders it's going to be a lot of time down on the knees I realize that orbital sander take the finish off that's all I want and then refinish that hardwood from there would that not work? yes it would work that's called screening screening the finish and uh, you can do it with an orbital sander you just have to be very cautious and keep that thing moving all the time. And you can yeah. uh, screen the finish well, off. a small orbital sander. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. And small, then, not one of those big stand-up dudes. Yeah. Well, you you know what works real well on these? And it will... How big an area are you talking about? How big is your room? Oh, let's see. Kitchen and hallway. Kitchen, uh, living, uh, living room. It's not that much. Just say twelve by twelve by twenty. All right. Not counting the hallway. Ha, have you That's seen? Have, I know you've seen this, but you know these little buffers you see janitors use out on big floors. You know yeah. that just kind of it goes round and round and round, and they kind of walk behind it. Uh, if you take one of those yeah. and put a screening a screen on it instead of a sanding disc or a buffer head, that, that's made to take the finish right. off. And the reason I'm mentioning that, you could rent okay. one of those for probably less than 50 bucks for a day and go out there and do that whole job and use your little sander to get in the corners and around the edges. And if you'll just screen off yeah. that finish and then clean it real good with a tack rag or, or anything to get the dust off, especially down in the grooves. Then you can turn right around and put a finish so back on get, it. Though. Sir? How do you get all that dust out? Do you use like a damp rag? or? Uh, I use a tack rag that will lift it up, but a vacuum cleaner works real good. And, uh, and, and then go over it and it'll lift it up. Just don't. I wouldn't use a wet mop or anything like that. Nothing with moisture in it. Uh, no, no. But a, a good now vacuum. What is, it, what is it? What is a tack rag? I've heard that before. It's a rag that will this. It will attract those particles and lift it off instead of smearing it around. It. Uh, uh, it's any kind of a rag that it. It's porous enough that it will lift it off. And then you can take even these okay. products like used to be a product on on uh, on the counter that people use to clean their furniture called Indust. And then there's some commercial yeah. sprays you can buy at the janitorial supply that that you can lightly put on there, and it actually acts like a magnet and pulls that stuff up. But it it actually helps lift it okay. instead of smearing it around. So that's what you want to use. Yeah, you don't want dust, want you? Yeah. What kind of finish? Polyurethane? If you want a shiny finish, you can put polyurethane on. If you want a matte finish, you can use what's called gem seal. Uh, Go to a, if you don't know a hardwood finisher, go to a 
real paint store, not a big box store, but a, someone that knows yeah. about different kinds of right. stains and finishes, and ask them to show you their product and tell them what kind of finish you want, and they will give you an example of what it looks like. Okay. And then you can roll it on. Okay. Make sure you get a very good roller. You don't want anything that's cheap because you don't want the hair of the roller coming off yeah. and you don't want air bubbles in it. So get I your, didn't think you could use roller on polyurethane. Oh, yes, you can. You sure I can. I didn't know that. I thought you had to use a brush. Well, no, you can use that. It just has to be a okay. thin nap roller. Otherwise, you'll get bubbles in it. But yeah, you, that's but what you, I'm you, you almost, uh, you can brush it on. It's not a problem. Just that way, you can get down in the grooves real good. But you'll find a lot of people will that, spray that's it not on. What I'm thinking. Yeah. Just a good. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, but it, okay. it, if you got a big area, uh, uh, it'll save you a lot of time. Well, the reason I was wanting to do a little bit of time, because I'm kind of limited for time. Then I got pets. What in the world do I do with them? <laughs> Follow me. Lock them up. I'm thinking if I could do it a little at a time, keep it locked off. I know what I'm thinking. Yeah, you don't want Fido walking across the door yeah. when you got a new finish on it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It'd give it a little character. Yeah. It's not like when you walk into a warehouse somewhere and you see a dog track going across the warehouse floor. Okay. All a, right. know, a dog walked across with its cement set up. There you go. That's right. Well, good luck on hey, your project. Thank you, caller. We appreciate that. And uh, we got about uh, about three uh, three minutes left uh, left in the show. We need to talk about real quick one of our other sponsors because we don't have to worry about wood floors with these guys because they deal in metal. That's right. Yep. Quality outdoor products. They are up here in three way. And uh, if you need a, an outdoor building or you need a new roof. Or uh, anything else that has to do with metal. They can fabricate exactly what you want in just about any color that you want. They can sell you the accessories to go with it. Make you a neat little package to where all you got to do is pick it up in your trailer. Take it home and start erecting whatever it is you want to build. And if you don't know how to do it, they have people that can actually do it for you. Yeah, they do. Uh, they can uh, put all the framing up. And if you want to see something kind of neat when you're down there, just kind of take a little tour. And they'll show you how all this is done and the, 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 the fine machinery that they have that fabricates all this stuff. They can make all the framing for you. Then they can make the panels to the contours that you want, the way you want that metal uh, shaped. They can do uh, surface screwed metal. They can use, use standing seam metal. Just about anything you want, and you can design your own building if you choose so, and they'll have it ready for you real quick. Most of the stuff you can pick up and get it the same day. Yeah, that's So uh, that's a great place to go, and it's, it's a good asset to have in this part of the country. So go see Quality Outdoor Products. They are, they're good at what they do. Located on the 45 Bypass out in the Sovereign Nation of Three Way. And uh, you can dun, give, da, da, da. Da, da, give them a call. At <laughs> wave eight, the flag. Wave that flag. 888-485-5372. Got about a minute before the music's going to uh, crank in here. Anything we need? Oh, wait. Here's a text coming in. Uh, on that last uh, last call about the uh, the wood floors and yeah. not knowing uh, what a tack rag was, I yeah. thought I did, and I, I was right. But anyway, this guy, the texter says, body shop supply store can supply you with a tack rag. There you go. Yep. They use it a lot on their paint finishes. Yeah, absolutely. Get all the dust off. All the dust. Uh-oh, I hear something coming. What's that? Oh, the orchestra. We got the music is, is fired going. Up we got the band there. playing, which means <laughs> I got to shut up and get out of here. So, uh, hey, it's been fun. Great calls, great texts. We appreciate everybody weighing in with us this morning. And we'll get out here and come up with some more real life stuff and be back with you next uh, Thursday afternoon, yep. 30 minutes. Yep, about 2.15. That's right. And then we'll jump in there on Saturday morning, do another hour, and y'all come on in and join the show, and we'll see you then. Sounds good. See you then. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye.